Welcome to Life-Giving Water Messages, where I expound upon the Word of God and through the internet deliver it to you. My name is Reverend Todd Laddick, and this is part two of a four-part series entitled Summer of Love with today's message, Community of Love, uh, based off of John chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. So let us dive into the Word today. After this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed a hill and sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, Even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish, but what good is that with this huge crowd? Tell everybody to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. After he did the same with the fish. And they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, Now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled twelve baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, Surely this is the prophet we have been expecting. When Jesus saw that they were ready to force him to be their king, he slipped away into the hills by himself. Amen. Now, I just realized I uh, read a couple verses more than what um, I planned to, but that's okay. You got the full the full gamut there, the full story. So, this is Jesus feeding the 5,000. We witness to the love of God when we share our goods and gifts with the community. I have been blessed to serve all sorts of people during my life. I've started off in ministry serving the youth as a youth pastor. And from there, I have um, served as a pastor of people of all walks of life, aged from conception through death. I have also served as a chaplain of retired folks in a continuing care um, retirement community. When I came to my current appointment, the current congregation that I'm serving, I, I was thrilled because this was a walking town. You know what I mean? This was a town that had sidewalks and stores and restaurants, a library, a historical society museum, and it's the county seat. I mean, we have like all these historical buildings of this Victorian historic section of town. We've got you know courthouse, like this historic courthouse that Francis Asbury stood on the steps of. You know, like uh, George Washington had been in this area. This is like this is like a pretty historical place, pretty cool place to to live. Um, and as a history buff and uh, as a community builder, I mean, wow, so cool far out man you know like god's going to do great things here in newton and i do believe that why you might wonder because newton is a great little town now if you don't live in newton bear with me i'm i'm sharing my experience of this great town that i live in this great congregation that i live in but i promise this 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 is relevant no matter what town you live in because we need to love the communities we serve amen so like i believe that newton 
that Newton is going to just have great things happen here, that God's going to do great things here. And I believe that because Newton's a great little town, because I've been a part of the Sussex County Merchants Association, which um, actually started off as the Spring Street uh, Merchants Association, and it, it, it grew to include all you know merchants around Sussex County. And uh, that was started by the merchants on Spring Street. And, and being a part of that group has really been eye-opening to me. I've seen the strengths, the, the weaknesses of our community. And I, and I say that lovingly, er, areas to celebrate as well as areas of growth that are not too unlike our own in the congregation I serve. Probably not too unlike most congregations. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Spring Street has a number of really committed, hardworking merchants who want to see business on the street boom. They've gotten creative, as you know, and did things no one could have guessed possible, including attracting tens of thousands of people to a Harry Potter festival. Now, Unfortunately, uh, politics got involved after that, and um, uh, it just became more and more difficult to 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 hold that event, and it, it did not end up lasting beyond uh, two years. But but still, it was it was it was an attempt to do something new, and it succeeded. It, it, even if in the moment it succeeded in a way nobody expected, nobody. Uh, we have ha we have an excellent and compassionate police department in this town who truly do serve and protect with honor and, and integrity. I've seen them do it time and time again. They they serve people equally. They 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 serve with integrity, with character. They're they're great people. You can talk to any one of them. Um, you know we have a great police department and an excellent fire and ambulance uh, first responders. You know we have we have top of the line everything here. We have a great high school, great hospital, great community college. And when challenging things happen, we band together. You know, that's that's Newton. That's that's what we do. So, with that said, the town also is pretty notorious for resisting change. It has a tremendous pride in its history, which is a great thing. I mean, I'm a, I love history, don't get me wrong. But that pride can get in the way of progress as well. What's more, we we know within our community, as as it is within all communities, we have some haters in our midst, don't we? And you know who I mean. The ones who drive down the road with their flags flapping in your you know car's face. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Only kidding about that one. But but seriously, you know who I mean. You know, the people who like to draw swastikas on people's houses or others who spew hatred, division, and extreme partisanship. They exist everywhere around the world. So that's not unique to here. It's just reality. And, of course, no community is perfect. Certainly, Newton is not perfect. But still, we're a pretty darn rocking community. We really are. And I am encouraged by the give and take between the past and future. I really am. It, it's good to progress, but one must never lose their past or their roots either. All of this to say that being a part of a community, being a part of the community like an active part, like one who is even currently serving as the vice president of the Newton Rotary Club, is such a blessing. And it has taught me about the ingenuity and resilience of this community I call home. It's also taught me about my own ingenuity and resilience. It has shown me who I am as a leader. I, I truly feel that each place I have served has shown me a little more about myself and made me realize what my capabilities are. So no doubt, Newton has shaped me. And no doubt, being part of Rotary and the Merchants Association and other groups have all been helpful parts of my life. And they've kept me excited throughout the pandemic, even though I should have been bummed. And at times was. 
but I've always been excited, always felt that there was something to hope for amid the chaos. One of the ways we find our sense of identity is by being a part of groups. What groups have you been part of? Maybe you still are. The feeding of the 5,000 is one of the signs in the Gospel of John that witnesses to the identity of Jesus. Apart from the resurrection, it is the only miracle or sign that is found in all four Gospels. The story is an example of the table fellowship that was at the center of Jesus' ministry. Jesus invites the crowd to break bread with him. While Jesus could have performed this sign by himself, he chooses, he chooses, Jesus could have performed this by himself, but he chooses to use the boy's willingness to share what he had as an example to others. The disciples, though doubtful at first, witness the boy's generosity. And the way Jesus transforms that generous, though small gift, into something much, much greater. In asking the disciples to gather up the leftover bread, Jesus both emphasizes uh, and uh, em- he both emphasizes the miracle that has taken place and invites them to participate in the community of table fellowship. They become participants in Jesus' work of serving and feeding. Through the generosity, through the generosity and the gifts of the community, the crowd, my friends, is fed. We witness to the identity of Jesus by serving our community in mission. That's what's important to note here. That's the important part. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. We witness to the identity of Jesus by serving our community in mission. When we share our gifts, we strengthen and build community. We also claim our own identity as people who belong to Jesus' community. This is not a community characterized by insiders and outsiders, but first and foremost by what it has received, the grace of Jesus, and secondarily by the way it witnesses to that grace by serving others. It is important for us to recognize That Jesus understood attending to the basic physical, physical needs as an essential piece of evangelism. That so often, that so often gets forgotten, especially in modern uh, uh, Christianity. It's so, it's so become about the personal individual salvation that people's physical needs almost matter nothing. I mean, yeah, we throw them, you know, SpaghettiOs and uh, Chef Boyardee and, uh, you know, call it a day, but we're not really meeting their needs. We're just, we're just doing Band-Aids, right? So, and I'm not saying it's not good to do that. I'm not saying we shouldn't do food pantries and we shouldn't do clothing ministries and, and, and those things, but we should be doing more of it. And we should be not only working to f- meet the immediate need now, but working to end the problem in the future so that people aren't left without. Um, and churches can and do get involved in this type of work. Um, And Jesus did get involved in this type of work. Jesus understood attending to basic physical needs as an essential piece of evangelism and a tangible sign of God's grace. Let me quickly ask you this. How is God calling you to use your resources and gifts 
to build and serve the community. What gifts do you have to offer your God, your church, and your community? Let's put it this way. The building does not serve Christ. The building does not serve Christ, you dig? It it serves us. Let's put it this way. The question is not, where do we serve? The question is, who do we serve? If the answer is Christ, as I am sure it is, then that means that the building we worship in is being used by us to serve Christ. But it's not the building. It's us serving Christ. The church is always, always, always the people. And as the church, we are always called to bring more people to know Christ and into the fold. So how is God calling us to deepen conversation and broaden the circle by increasing conversation partners. Who might we have overlooked thinking like the disciples did of the little boy that they did not have much to contribute? So let me ask that again. Who might we have overlooked thinking that they might not have much to contribute, just like the disciples did of that little boy. If we begin to think as Christ is calling us to think, it won't be long before we begin to see the impossible become possible through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we just thank you for this opportunity to um, to be challenged to grow, uh, not only individually, but also as a community, to grow as a community of love, um, a loving community. And so, Lord, we're always, we should always be looking to grow more and more in your love. Uh, we are never, ever uh, there yet and and um, we should always be looking for you to to uh, to perfect us in your love so that we may be a witness of your identity and a witness of your great love for all people and we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior Amen well friends with that said I'd invite you to check out the episode notes contribute if you can uh we will always be appreciative of that but in the meantime remember you are richly blessed so that you may be a blessing to others amen go in peace